and share her knowledge with you. Uh, she has been studying the Sogetsu School of Ikebana for over 14 years. Um, she has done demonstrations and exhibitions um, throughout the Portland metro area here at the Garden and also at Portland um, Art Museum and at Leach Botanical Garden, among other places. She has an excellent Instagram account, so if you're interested in seeing more of her work, that's a good place to look. And at the end of today's presentation, you'll also have an opportunity to take pictures of her arrangements. Uh, we'll be setting up a shoji screen so that you'll have a nice backdrop. Um, Hello friends in India, thank you so much for creating Zoom programs all this time and I have been enjoying it very much and I wish you continue and I wish you good luck and happiness. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, our demonstration is always from behind so that the viewers will face it but it's not to be taken for granted. Some people do face their piece and then when it's done they turn it around or in the middle they will turn around but in the meantime you don't get to see so we always and I don't use the word arrange either create from the back I can be very forgiving but I can be quite picky so <laughs> arrange is <laughs> you can use it but I um, try not to use we are not arranging drawers or anything like that so I do use other verbs but um, yeah so we always create from the back so that viewers can see it and then incorporating the lecture part of it, which is also another skill we have to do. So I'm very excited. It takes certain kind of people who love to do this. So I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I already know, many of you know what Ikebana is. Can you tell when you see Ikebana, that's Ikebana? The other one is the Western flower arranging. Well, that's great, yeah. I have been where people didn't know what Ikebana was, which was really good challenge for me so I think my yeah so actually I have a separate information sheet with an Instagram account only an email too so feel free to check it out I have been posting daily since the lockdown in Portland or Oregon so that was mid-March daily posting in Instagram so I actually use it for my tools when I teach for my students they have certain themes like leaves only, focus on the container, focusing on colors, so that I will have those already in there. So they can see, see how I have done it and then they can use it. So not only am I challenging myself, but it, it's really useful, I find. So I don't know when to stop them. <laughs> I think two years because it's so close. And that was done by Ikenobo priests or monks. And, but even before that, the, the monks were preserve, offering, making a uh, temple offering for the Buddha, for the Buddha and an altar. That's since sixth century or so when the Buddhism came to Japan from India through China. I mean, it, it went from continent and all, also by, by sea too, but through China and then to Japan and then people started making offering with flowers. For the for the altar, or you will still find at homes there's a altar for the the dead, the family members, the loved ones. So that's where we also offer flowers. But even before that, the ancient Japan the people believe I think they still do that divine spirits will descend from heaven through tall uh, evergreen trees like pine and fir and things like that and also a high mountain or mountain peak, big rocks. So if you have been to Japan or seen the picture, the white paper, strip of paper on the tree, things like that, that's the part of the offering. And you may have seen evergreen sprigs offered for that. And it's really for uh, harvest, prosperity, longevity. And then certain plants represent certain symbols, so like pine, evergreen so it's longevity prosperity and i talked about that too for uh, january new year's so there are certain plant materials that we use for new year's pieces and then pine is one of them evergreen longevity that symbolizes and um, bamboo bamboo is green but it's very flexible if you have seen them in snow it may be bent like this but it can snap back so that's what it, 
represents too. And then of course, you know, if you plant them in the wrong place, it takes over, it's all over. So very strong prosperity too. And the colors, red and white, gold, silver, those are the also symbolizes this um, fortune. I think we just had the Chinese New Year February 1st, and you have, we have seen a lot of gold and red. So it's very interesting when we do Ikebana, even modern times, some of the colors and materials symbolize certain good things. So we tend to use it too. So a traditional art form, but we have to adapt to what's going on. So Soviet school is um, considered one of the modern schools with the Ohara school too. Ohara is probably 135 or so years old, and the Soviet is 95, but that's considered contemporary because, you know, comparing to five, over 500 years. So our motto is, and then our headmaster, the first one, Sofu Teshigahara, I think he was marketing genius. Probably he wasn't thinking, but he keeps it very simple. Like our motto is anywhere, anytime, by anyone. And some people would add with anything, that's four. For Japanese, four is not a good number. <laughs> four, the sound, the she is the same as death. So Japanese tend to avoid it. So I think I like three, anywhere, anytime, by anyone. So that's why it's really loved if, if anywhere. India, it's very big in India, China, everywhere actually. So it's very nice. So that, that's why these are seasonal plants, but you know, everywhere in the world, different plant materials and what's available is different. So I think it really uh, goes with our motto. And uh, we also have, by anyone, it can be children. So don't go with uh, seven or 11 principles of design or something like that. So just keep it simple and uh, can be done by anyone, everyone. Any questions so far? If you have questions, just raise your hand. This is an interactive event. So, no, not so far. Western style flower arranging, you, you tend to see a lot of flowers. Uh, usually it's same kind of a view from all angles, not always, but many times. But when you see Ikebana, you see asymmetrical design and then a lot of openness, the space you don't feel ends up creating bigger space. So negative space is a big, big one. And you may have heard the word ma, M-A, ma, can be for spatial concept or for music. You know, you wait a second, like that, the, the space that you don't say anything or don't hear anything. So ma concept is really big in Ikebana too, as for music and other things. And this is actually natural. It's, we do a lot of um, bending and shaping, but if we can find the shape that's already interesting, then that saves us our work. So this is um, red trick dogwood or cornus alba or sangomizuki. So that's what I have to do in my Instagram. I post in Japanese and English, so I have to know both the plant names in Japanese and English, and sometimes um, scientific names, but botanical names, but not always. So now I'm going to move on to what, it, what you need to do Ikebana, if you are interested. So the first thing is the clippers, or hanabasami, flower clippers. Or if you don't have these, then you can always use garden clippers too. So you can always find them. The gift shop too, do you, do you know if they carry? They used to, okay. If not, then Amazon, you can always find. You go Amazon and the keyword would be just Ikebana and then you can put in clippers, scissors, any of those things, and these should come out. The good thing about this is that it opens up quite a bit. So you can cut, I mean, not to say that you have to cut thick branch like this, but it's very easy to use. It will cut leaves, it will cut branches. I only need one pair. I mean, I have several pairs, but I can just need, and that, this is my tool. And then maybe saw and other things, but 
yeah, this is just my number one tool. You know, you used to be able to say, I just trouble with this, but not anymore. You have to check, you can't really carry this in the airplane. So it, it sounds good. Yeah, I trouble with just a pair of scissors, clippers for my Gibana journey, but no, not realistic anymore. So I have to check them, but so clippers number one, and then the containers. So with anything we can use, but mainly we do use fresh materials. So something to hold water. And I usually, for the demonstration, bring different type of materials, uh, containers. And these, I would say, small to medium size, because they can be quite big. So Sarah, um, material, I think if you're an engineer or a mechanic, you may know. It's called one by two by three, and uh, it's for tooling. And I got it from a student. Uh, we had some kind of event, and then they had those on the table. Their club, they were recruiting people. I said, what is that? I said, it had such huge potential for my Ikebana, and then they were like overwhelmed. You can have the red flowers, but you can have the red containers too. Then if you don't have anything, make one. So this is really, um, you may have, just a, this is jar actually, but you may have a glass, just simple glass um, container. Well, this happens to be even the label zone too. But, you know, it's, it's really, and what I made is, it's a paper, and then this is a silver Sharpie to make some designs or pattern, just random design. So with this, now we have a red container. So that's what I told, tell people too, that you may like the, not like the color that you already have, but you can always use cloth, yarn, plastic, paper. You can just wrap it around and make your own container. So possibility is endless. Okay, any questions so far with the tools and design or pink frogs? in here and these newer ones are very nice it has that rubber already yeah. if so it doesn't slide or it doesn't scratch but when i have those without so that time i have to use a um, draw liner cut in shape so that it doesn't scratch or slide around so when we use um, sometimes thick branches that might bend my pins so then we have a pin straightener. I think Amazon too. So, mm -hmm. and then the, the other thing is a rake for Kenzan because it doesn't get dirty. <laughs> like this. And then strength. So, you know, you have to maintain your tools, then straighten your pins, and it's good to go. So, and it's like when you dress up you put on your necklace and your scarves and things so the basic container and tools then we have what we call kadai flower base i just bought the small ones but this is just a slice of wood or piece of plastic and maybe there's a bamboo all kinds of things too so by putting something underneath maybe this one i think this is too small for this one but to get the idea it, it looks more finished so it's always nice especially for the exhibit that you have something like this to put underneath i think some of the designs by uh, traditional schools require that you use kadai for certain designs so these i think you just have to keep your eyes and ears open for these things because I, you can find them i'm sure or sometimes um, estate sale things like that's really i think um wood crafters in portland they have exotic wood too so that can be a place okay, yeah. okay so any questions on the tools and equipment no oh. And when we start, usually we add enough water to cover Kenzan because this is not where it's going to end up. So it may go up to there. We have to be able to carry 
So just enough water, but not overflowing until when it's in a final location, then I will add up to the rim. These are Japanese witch hazel. And they come in, I think actually white too, red, yellow, or white. And the actual size and all the details will be in the taught in the class, but I will just create the basic design. Okay. Oh, one more thing. To keep your plant last longer, or if you get buzz, if you cut under water, it will last longer and then the buds tend to open up. Not so much for the, the woody plant materials, more for flowers. I'm sorry. Oh. But I will do it just so that it's a good habit to do. usually come in three main lines. We call at Sogetsu, Shinsoe Hikai, but I think Ohara is about Shinsoe Tai, Ikenobo would be different names too. But usually it goes with them, three main lines. And then, um, we don't use this word, but where it should go and then how it should be presented. I guess we call mitate is the word. Just really see which one to use for what and then how. So this actually has front where the, you can see the flowers better and the back, so you see in the back of the flower. So I want to make sure that the attractive side is to the viewer. Stays like this, then and I can angle. And then the next one. Again, I have to want to make sure that the more flowers are towards the viewer. And then for branches, I do cut not only underwater but in angle and um, split so that it goes in the Kenza better, because otherwise if it's too blunt, it will just be pushing in and bending your Kenza pins. So these are two main lines. Usually this and the third one would be flower. But I'm actually going to break a rule just a little bit too. Instead of this way, I'm going to probably Oh, I had a flower, so that's like, where did it go? That's what happened too. So we always have to bring extra because we carry and then sometimes we fall or break or From here, we will be kind of filling the space what we are doing with these extra branches. This is a very good material too. You can shape, I mean, it's beautiful to begin with. It has line and color already in place. And 
and always add something towards the back to add depth. You know, you now you see it's very different. I also learned when people are seeing from different angles, I need to make sure that you get to see the front and there's no one here to this time, but in the past they were, so I had to go all the way, but yeah. And the other things that you're looking down too, so that's a different view while you are probably at the right um, height. So this is called the moribana, moru to pile hana flower. So pile on flower. <laughs> and this is invented by Ohara, I think a third Yamoto. He, he realized that the flowers from uh, Western world are coming into Japan, the lifestyle is changing. It's not only the tatami room with the uh, alcove, tokonoma for ikebana, we may be using table and chair, coffee table low or table high. So he figured that container with kenzan and using all kinds of uh, western flowers are okay. I think yesterday or so, someone asked me, can you use western flowers or is there any flowers you cannot use? I said, no, no, that's a long time ago. You can use roses and everything that you can find now. I think early on, maybe, Roses were like, not taboo, but not something that um, Ikebana suited, but no, that's a long time ago. So this is Japanese witch hazel, or mansaku, and this is camellia, but camellia sazankwa, sazanka. They are blooming right now, so. Okay, moribana, that's a basic style. Then I usually go to nageide. Nage is to throw. Ide is in, so throwing style. Okay, for this, this microphone is so pesky. This, this is Oregon state plant. Oregon grape or Mahonia japonica. I know when they, they look like this, they kind of, I and mean, when it's growing, you may be able to tell, but they do color really nicely too. Yeah. And we learn to use different plants that um, sometimes it's a go-to plant, like my go-to plant would be curry willow. Um, yeah, that's, or uh, camellia is good too. Camellia was actually our first headmaster's favorite. If I have buds, but they will open. So the difference, uh, you will tell like regular camellia, the flower will fall as is, just all intact. And that's why actually flower, camellia is not considered a um, good luck kind of a flower. You're not to take it to the hospital or something to visit people, drop dead. So we want to avoid it. That sazanka, this variety, sazanka actually loses petals, not the whole thing. So yeah, but you know, it's, it, that's part of the deal to me. <laughs> if I have a show, and then I will choose the probably buds or I, so usually it's a Friday installation. So I will have something maybe 57% open to have them open maybe 78 the next day and 85 to 90% open the next day. So it's very, very tricky, especially lilies. They like to open, it's warm and sunny. So yes, good, good question. It's, not as easy as it seems, it takes a lot of planning and when you buy them, you keep them in a cold place, like downstairs bathroom, you know, things like that. Then you take it out for the show, so yeah. And then you enjoy each process to each process in each stage. Yeah. So this is um, Oregon grape or Mahonia, Mahonia japonica. And this is very thick, so really not necessary to cut under water but it's always good to do so I, I will go ahead and do it. And I'm specifically uh, using this one with because of the red, red color. Again, I'm going for 
you know, Valentine's theme, so the colors are red. And sometimes uh, there are many techniques to um, fasten, but this one I'm going to just use direct fastening up uh, technique, so it hits the wall and it should stay, but it may not stay. Uh, maybe it doesn't. That's okay too. And then this is also Japanese witch hazel and yellow. And I think it's a good combination of colors with the yellow and red. And what I'm doing is, um, so this part is like mass and then here is a line. So I'm using mass and uh, line combination. Of course, colors, you know, that you cannot ignore the colors. I have water in this container already. So what I'm doing is mass on one side and more line on the other side. And you know, the, the flowers will fall eventually and that's okay too. So I, I'm the background so you can see the, the color really well too. For you, and for you. So this style is called nageire, throwing style. Then I will move on to freestyle. Yeah. If I have extra time, I will put something in this too. So, so the glass container isn't your typical ikebana container, but it's very interesting. There's this line, so I can add water up to a certain level and be part of the design too. And this is Corners album or Red Tree Dogwood or Sango Mizuki. It's, this is also my go-to plant material too. It shapes very well and even if bent and broke, it still drinks water. This is when not enough space. Maybe we'll need to expand the eight foot table, but okay. And then this is either Andromeda or Omega. Yeah, that depth in the back. Andromeda or Pieris Japonica, and this variety is variegated that has the white. To pick up the red, I chose the one with kind of a red in here. Or was it supposed to be this one? No, I think this. I do plan, and but then I like to kind of play around also. So this is very interesting too. So if I can put this one on the mantle or somewhere high because the flowers are kind of coming down this way to choose certain plant materials. Like if, if this is it, then something like maybe this can be hung somewhere like here, <laughs> for example. And then flowers should be kind of a coming down to meet the viewer's face. So that's very important to, to know what you use and where to use it and when you use it. So Gerber Daisy is beautiful, but to me it's very hard to use because the flat faced, like sunflower is the same way. How you make it stand up or to meet the viewer. So it takes a lot of thinking. And if hanging like this, then I think it's 
nice to let it hang instead of this way. So it really takes a lot of thinking and what's available too. Okay. And then, uh, like I talked about, this space I don't feel, I'm not fitting all kinds of things here. I am just keeping it open, that's the negative space. And I can add more these shapes as a, it's a kind of a horn or something, but I don't have to. So this is where I can choose. I, this can be done just like this, or I can put more things in. It, like, who does oil painting? No one this time. <laughs> oil painting, you know when to store it. Hard to know when to stop. You can just keep painting over. So that's the same idea too. It's always hard to know <coughs> when to stop. So for this one, I think I will just... And when you use the clear glass container, inside should be, it should not be cluttered. So in this case, you can see the line, but it's not all messy. Again, this has to be part of the design too. There's a, there's a line, but it's clean line. Like this. So this is red twig dogwood or cornus alba or sangomizuki and this is andromeda or pierce japonica variegated or asebi or ashibi in japanese okay and then now on to more well I should have done more tall one instead of a wide one, how there's no <laughs> space. So this I just wanted to show as a different type of container. This is a bamboo bit basket with, um, I think this is, yeah, this is bamboo too. So we can put water in it, and I should. I shouldn't pretend that there's water in it. And this is very light, so it is important to put water in it. <laughs> Otherwise, it will trip over. So this, I kind of wanted to have a um, oh, wabi-sabi approach. So this, this is just regular um, camellia. And I do like this branch a lot too. And then different schools have different rules. I think some schools of Ikeban, they don't like um, material touching the handle, but we are not so picky about that part of it. So I think I'll just go ahead and let it touch a little bit. That's okay too. So nice, it's really shiny and yeah. And sometimes we do worry. So if the shiny side is the, the front side, then try not to show the back unless you're intentionally showing the back because that's interesting. Like uh, magnolia, this has a shiny green and then the velvety brown. You can show both, but again, it has to be part of the design and intentional about it. Not accidentally showing kind of a thing. And then, this is one of the white rose hips. It's really this decaying part is what's really, that, that's the my wabi sabi part. Earlier it was more full and uh, fresh, but I think this actually has really end of winter look to it. And then I can actually cut more too, but it's very hard to take off pretty rose hips. So something <coughs> like that can be there or it can be hung if it, if i'm hanging it i think i'll make sure that this hangs down slightly so that it's more towards the viewer like this but if it's going to be if it's going to be on the floor for example then i think i'll make it up a little more so again meeting the viewer's eye So Ikebana can be defined as space creation too. 
not only uh, that you're actually creating something on the table, but by adding something like this, then it creates a different space there. Okay. This is my adrib. I, this wasn't planned. So, but okay. Especially on the tatami, we always put something underneath. Yeah, so now, okay. before and after. So, so that's how you can tell nothing there. Now you put just a little thing, just two branches and one wild road stem, and then that creates a different atmosphere now. So that creates space. Okay, okay. <laughs> this one, I brought it last time too, but it always is, this guy gets neglected <coughs> that I ran out of time. But what I wanted to show, because I do want to get to this, what I wanted to do was to do this same plant, different variety. This is variegated Pyrus japonicum or Andromeda, and this is not variegated. So then I wanted to use with red flowers. And then this is also uh, same, red wood, dark wood. This is a, a, how I wanted to do then. Instead of red flowers, go with the red container for Valentine's Day. Okay, but poor guy, it's always. <laughs> and then I also wanted to talk quickly about the miniature too. So Sogetsu's miniature has to be smaller than palm of your hand. And many times we have multiple, not just one, but three or five, odd number. And um, it's small, but it's more about the um, small universe that's made by part of flowers a lot of times. You're not looking for small flowers, but you, you take something apart and use a petal or berry or part of leaf or grass, and that's what it does. So here we go. I don't usually do a demo because it actually takes a lot longer than these other things. You have to <laughs> dissect and study and then put it together. So I, I stopped doing the demo of it, but I have it ready. So this one, this metal tooling thing. And this is Korokia or ghost bush. You may have known. No? Okay. And this is dried and actually painted black. So this, and this is that tooling uh, metal thing. This way. So this really gives you freedom because it doesn't have to be in the water. What does it? Okay. Usual Valentine. It's too shiny. You can't read. Really. Okay. What is this? Okay. So this is the live show's <coughs> excitement. I think I did it over here. It can be anywhere actually, but maybe it's not going. Ah! Anyway, you get the picture though. This is so annoying, but you can, okay. This side, and this side. Okay. Oh, this is, can you imagine, this seems like the easiest one compared to all these other more technical things, and then this thing is just not cooperating. But I think it's, it can be any way. This is why it's really good too that you can go this way and or the other way. This one, I think I actually like it in at, at the end more like. I just have to be forceful, I guess. So something like this can be viewed from all angles. It can be on your coffee table. I think it can be on the modern architectural offices reception table to be very specific. 
I think architects would love something like this too. Just really clean and so this uh, wraps up my demonstration. So feel free to ask questions, come down, take pictures. We will move. Are you visiting あのね、締めつないで。お茶の。いや。